Okay, let's get started. Welcome to this math screencast. I'll be uh, focusing today's lesson on, as the title says, comparing and ordering of various kinds of rational numbers. So uh, first of all, I think we should begin with though talking about what rational numbers are and wh what are they, how they fit in the whole picture of things. Uh, generally speaking, in, in grade school, we learn about real numbers. Uh, there is another complete set of numbers called imaginary numbers, but we don't usually hit those until maybe grade 12 or even later. So the real numbers are what you're going to focus on in high school and elementary school. And um, real numbers the real numbers are divided into two sections. We have rational numbers and irrational numbers. Uh, first off, let's uh, look at irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are things like uh, pi and uh, things like square root of 2 and other numbers like for instance this one here is 0 0.197693 and it goes on and on and does not repeat does not end and does not repeat and those things um, are called irrational numbers they cannot be written as a fraction uh, Okay, so let's talk about rational or rational numbers now. And I'm going to talk about, um, first of all, natural numbers. Just mention what natural, uh, natural numbers are. Natural numbers are, um, are basically also called counting numbers. We count things. We start with 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc., etc. And so those are the positive integers the natural or counting numbers. Uh, the whole numbers, which is the next uh, set of numbers, is exactly the same as the natural numbers except for one thing. We add zero. So I'm going to put plus and then zero to that set. By adding zero, we now call this the whole numbers. Which then brings us to the third category of numbers called integers, which includes all the natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., and uh, plus 0, and also includes the negatives. So if we go um, uh, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc., and all the way down to, to negative whatever, infinity kind of thing. So the integers, negative integers, that Negatives and positives and zero are what we call the integers. Uh, rationals, now the, the, the other numbers that make up rational numbers are, are other numbers that don't fit in that category. For instance, another rational number would be uh, 0 0.5. That's a decimal that stops. It does not continue on. Uh, another number would be, um, say, 18.6. Two five. Uh, that decimal also stops. Uh, there are number are decimals though, that do not stop. For instance, if I had the number uh, seven point uh, two three two three two three goes on and like keeps repeating like that, so this part repeats. The two three repeats. That number is also a rational number. You can write that as a fraction as a mixed number in this case with a whole number part and a fraction part. And uh, so any, of course, a rational number is any kind of fraction. So if I put the uh, number 3 quarters, that's also a rational number. And a number like 1 and 16 over th 35, say, that's also a uh, rational number, anything I've written as a, a fraction or, or a mixed number like that. So uh, that gives us a base that we're talking about when it comes to rational numbers. And that's what we're going to be dealing with again in this last time. We're talking about, as the top says here, ordering, comparing and ordering rational numbers. So we're not dealing with ir irrational numbers here. So let's start with, uh, with integers, ordering integers, and uh, do some examples with this. Um, if I uh, say chose the integers, uh, let's just choose a couple integers. Say the integers uh, 3 and uh, 
say, uh, we'll, say, we'll say 11. Which is greater, 3 or 11? Well, that one's pretty obvious. We know, we can find them on the number line here. There's 3 right there, 11 is there. Which is bigger? Well, I'm going to circle it, 11 is bigger. Okay, let's move on here to try another couple numbers. What about uh, negative 6 or say 1? Which of those is bigger? Well, 6 is a larger, as far as the uh, digit is, is larger, than just 6 by itself. But negative 6 is down here, and 1 is up there. And uh, so we, f we find that 1 is the larger number. A negative is smaller than a positive. That's just one of our rules, and we know that. And we, use, we like to use a number line. Just move this over a little bit. A number line to help us with this. Uh, the next example, the last example I want to choose is an uh, example like, say, let's do negative. Oh, negative. Oh, negative 2 and negative 9. Which of those is larger? Well, let's just use a different color here to identify this. The negative 9 is here. The negative 2 is here. And uh, let's just change this color here. Okay. Uh, what, we, uh, what we find is that when it comes to a number line, any number to the right is always the larger. So number negative 9, negative 2, which is to the right? Well, negative 2 is, therefore negative 2 is the larger number. And in each of these cases, whether it was the, the blue or the orange or the green, always the number to the right is the larger number. Another way of looking at this is to think of a thermometer. If I um, have a thermometer and we just say um, have a scale of a thermometer right here and say this is 0 and then temperature goes up, Let's just put it by tens. 10, 20, okay, a little more here, 30. Those are the positive temperatures. Those temperatures we enjoy, we like to enjoy, holidays and that, summertime. Then we have these temperatures like negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. Well, those temperatures are more like winter temperatures. If I said to you, which temperature was greater? Is uh, negative negative 20 or positive 10. Well, you see if the temperature 10 is much warmer, much greater than minus 20 or 20 below zero. Again, this is all the temp thermometers is a number line straight up and down here. And so as we go farther negative, the lower the temperature, the smaller the value of the number. And the positive, the greater the positive to the uh, going up or to the right in our number line, the greater the value. Okay, so um, moving on to decimals. Let's uh, move this back here. Let's see our questions again. Which is greater? Okay, so let's just choose a couple of examples here. Uh, if I chose the example, say, oh, let's just do 3.5. And I'm the, another or say we'd say the number seven point two. Well, let's take a look here. Three point five is seven point two. Three point five would be where? Three point five is right here. That's where that one is. Seven point two is somewhere around there, which is greater. Well, which one is to the right? Seven point two is to the right, therefore it is greater. Same thing if I choose a negative value. If I chose negative, uh, say negative, let's just change color here. Um, let's go back here. Negative uh, 8.3 or negative, uh, say 14.6 which is greater. So let's look at this again. Negative 8.3 between negative 8 and negative 9, closer to negative 8, so be somewhere right about there, negative 
Negative 14.6 between 14 and 15. Negative 14, negative 15. A little bit more than half. Something like that. Which is greater? Well, which one is to the right? And again, we find out that this one is to the right. Therefore, it's the greater number. Negative 8.3 is the greater. So decimals and uh, integers are much the same as far as figuring on a number line. Which brings us to the last thing we're going to talk about today, ordinary fractions. Which is greater? So when it comes to fractions, we uh, what we do is we, we can do it two different ways. A couple of different ways. And so if I use an example, say, of, uh, well, let's just use uh, something that's really close together on this scale here. I'm going to use one and two-fifths, and I'm going to use one and three-tenths. Which of those is greater on the number line? Well, because the whole number part's the same at the front, one, uh, we know that that is not going to help us. So how do we do this? How do we compare them? Well, if I was going to say to you, for instance, if I use the example, I said, okay, um, which is greater, 112 miles or 80 kilometers? Use that example here. So 112 kilometers or 80 miles. That's difficult to compare. And why is that? Well, the reason is they're different units. We have to have them the same units or to compare them. And that's just similar to what fractions. With fractions, we have to have something that's similar as well. And that's the denominator. To be able to compare them, we have to have a similar denominator, or same denominator, actually. So we need to change both of these uh, fractions here. The one that stays the same, so it doesn't matter. We have to change that. But there's fractions. Change them both to tenths is the smallest that both 10 and 5 are going to evenly. So same, change them both to tenths. So the first one. How do I change two-fifths to tenths? I'm going to change the bottom. What do I do to the bottom? I multiply the bottom by two to get tenths. So I have to do the same thing to the top, and I get one and tenths on the two. Five times two is ten. Two times two is four on the top. One and four tenths. And their other fraction, of course, is one and three tenths. So in this case, which is bigger? It's easy to tell. Just look at the the tops of the fractions, 4 is bigger than 3, therefore this one will be our larger fraction. And once we get a common denominator, it's, it's easy to figure out that way. Um, we could also do this with, with negative as well. So let's just change, uh, let's just put a couple examples down here. Say I've had negative, uh, Let's see. Let's try something different. Oh, but, oh, negative 7 tenths or negative, uh, let's see what else should I use here, 3 fifths. 3 fifths. That's a pretty simple example. But still, it'll, it'll show what we need to know. Uh, negative 7 tenths. Uh, again, they're, they're not the same denominator, actually. What I'm going to do, I'm going to change this. I'm sorry. I'm going to change midstream here. This is just too much like the last problem we just did. And so I'm going to change this. We're going to, we're going to change it to, um, uh, so let's make this 7 eighths. And we'll make this one uh, 3 twelfths. Okay, which is, which is greater? And uh, it might be obvious, but, let's, but if you're not sure, how do we do this? Well, we need to get a common denominator again. So again, so we need to change the common denominator. Now, how do we get a common denominator? What we do here is, I'm going to, um, one of the simplest ways to do it is to take the larger denominator and see if the smaller one divides into it. Does 8 divide into 12 evenly? No, it doesn't. It goes into it once, but there's a remainder. So what I'm doing, I'm going to take, I'm going to take, and take the larger denominator and double it and see if the smaller one goes into it now. If that doesn't work, I'll triple the larger one, quadruple, until I finally get to 8 times 12, if that's where I have to go. But um, let's just double 12, and we get 24. And we find out that 8 does go into 24 evenly. So let's change these both to 24s. OK. So uh, how do I change the 8 to 24? Well, what I have to do here is I needed to multiply this by 3 to get 24. Therefore, I multiply the top by 3. 
and I get 21. Now remember, this is negative, 21 over 24. Don't forget the negative sign. And for the 12, how do we get 12 to 24? Well, I'm just going to double the 12. And therefore, I just double the top, and I get, uh, sorry, 18. What's going on here? Uh, made a mistake already, didn't I? Okay, let's just quickly not make that mistake. Catch yourselves before we get carried away here. And there we go. Put a 2 there. 2 times 3 is 6. I had the 6 right. It's just that I had the wrong number multiplying it. And again, that's negative 6 24ths. So which is bigger? Well, where would they come on the number line? Negative 6 24ths. Okay, so if I'm looking, this is between 0 and 1. 21 20, negative 21 twice is almost the same as negative 1. It'd be right close to negative 1. Negative 6 24ths is much closer to the 0. So which one, okay, which one is the larger? Well, the one to the right. Therefore, this number here, negative 6 24ths, is the larger number. Don't get fooled by the negative sign there. Make sure you always choose the one to the right. Lastly now, same thing, same question, which is greater? Uh, well, in this case, the, so we can change things. Number one, we chose the method of common denominators. Number two, we can change the fractions to decimals. For instance, one example I'm going to do here is I'll choose the example, um, let's just choose uh, 5 eighths or uh, the number, uh, let's see, let's choose uh, 6 tenths, yeah, 6 tenths, which is larger, which is greater, the greater number. Well, um, I could go for a common denominator, but I want to do a different method here. Change to a decimal. If I take my calculator, how do I change 5 eighths to a decimal? Well, the procedure is you take the top number and you divide it by the bottom number. And that gives me 0.625. That's for 5 eighths. For the 6 tenths, I do exactly the same thing. I take 6, divide it by the bottom. Don't do it backwards. Don't divide the bottom by the top. The top number divided by the bottom numbers. And if I use a calculator, I can probably do it in my head, I get exactly 0 0.6. So here we've got two, two procedures here, or two decimals. Which decimal is larger? Well, 0 0.625 is larger than 0 0.6, they're positive. So therefore, this one here is the larger. And uh, that's a, that's in many ways, that's an easier procedure. If you have a calculator, just to quickly pop it in and do a little division and get the decimal and compare the decimals. Um, okay, so I hope that uh, helps with uh, this learning guide one, the first part of learning guide one in Math 9.